this stitch along video we will be sharing with you the process which our piece went through before it got to the Instagram live stitch along that we were preparing for. So today we are going to be working on a gold work N letter which we then prepped and did the purple outline for in preparation to go live and chat with you guys a little bit later on in the afternoon. We wanted to make sure that there was plenty of interest in the piece already before we got started so we decided to go through the slightly less aesthetically pleasing parts before we went live getting that edge in so that you could clearly see what it was going to be and then getting a few of the early chips in so that there was a little bit more to see and we could just get on with getting the pretty glittery part going during the stitch along and focusing on talking to you guys and any questions you might have. These stitch alongs are always great fun for us. It's really nice to actually speak to people live and uh, see what they think about new products that we have coming out and things that they'd like to hear from us. So if you haven't already joined us for a stitch along, do join us on Instagram uh, where we announce when we're doing them, usually with about 24 hours notice and then you can join in and have a chat with us too on the next one that we do. So do look out for those, they really are good fun. Here we've got our Pearl Pearl edge going in, trying to keep it nice and smooth and evenly stretched. And once this is in, then we can just pop those few first chips in to get things going. We'll leave you here to watch this piece come to life in extraordinarily fast times. Uh, this is times eight speed, just so you know. And we'll pick you up again when the Instagram live starts, which is five minutes into this video if you wish to skip the prep.
Hello, how are we all doing today? It's me, Natasha, from the London Embroidery School, joining you today to work on this little piece of gold work that I've got here. And um, I don't know whether you've seen, but we launched this class today as a new class and we are super excited about it. So I hope you are too, because um, I've been waiting for this one for quite a few months now and I think it's just a really lovely thing. So I hope you're just as excited about it as I am. Now I've just started off this piece here, which I'm going to be working on and is from the launch today. So you guys are you know, like one of the first people to see it. So thank you so much for tuning in live today. And if you're watching this a bit later on um, and catching up with what's been going on, then I'm sure you're also pretty early to the party. I've been really excited to see that quite a few of you have already taken up the class and ordered it um, as it went live at 12 o'clock. So that was really lovely. Thank you so much for that. It really sort of um, makes us feel like we're doing the right sort of thing. Because um, after all, it's all there for you to enjoy. We didn't develop this class just for me to do it, <laughs> um, which would be a little bit uh, counterproductive. But I am enjoying it all the same. Because I feel like, if, you know, when you sign up to, to come to an Instagram Live, you are you know you're like you're one of my crew i feel like i can i can trust you guys and i can share you know something things that we probably wouldn't put out so anyway i i am doing this on today and those of you who are eagle eye eagle eyed even will probably notice that there are a few bits that are wrong with my pearl pearl edge I prepared it yesterday and I was fiddling with it earlier and I've damaged a bit of it. So really, I should be taking it off and starting again. However, given that I'd promised that I would come and chat to you guys at four o'clock today, there was no time for that. So I'm gonna have to just proceed as it is. And I mean, I know, I can hear your disappointment. I'm disappointed in myself too, to be honest. Um, I, I expected better of myself and you should too. Um, but yeah, the thing is that obviously the London Embroidery School is, we are a team. And so I don't know whether you've noticed or not. I, I kind of hope you have, but if you've taken one of our gold work classes or had a look at the taster for the gold work classes, it's not my hands doing it. That is one of my colleagues, um, who is a specialist in gold work. And so she does all of the gold work classes and demonstrations and stuff and I still voice it um, so it's still me chatting away this voice that I'm sure you're getting quite familiar with um, but yes it's not actually me doing it and that is the beauty of of being part of a team really isn't it is that you can you know we can all play to our strengths so yeah, she does all of that and makes it look super easy and really smooth and all that sort of thing because gold work is really not my speciality. It's, um, it's something that I really love and I just think is really beautiful, but it's not my yeah speciality. It's not something that I've studied in depth at all. And so this is a bit of a, a treat for me to do this today, to have some time to really work on you know, some of my own practices and something new. Because um, I've done a little bit, but it really is only a little bit. And I expect a lot of you will probably have done more than me. So, all in the same boat together, really. But this first design is, as I mentioned, made up of a Pearl Pearl Edge and then I'm going to be filling it with this bright check chipping center, which gives it a lovely glittery effect. 
I've got three colors here that I'm going to blend together to try and hopefully create a sort of a beautiful um, ombre effect and that's that's the plan basically we'll see if it goes to plan because you never know and that I guess is part of the nature of it being live is that things don't always go to plan much like me damaging the edge earlier but alas I guess that's just life for us isn't it really so how's everybody else doing today? What have you been up to today? Are you working? Are you at home? How are things going for you? Do feel free to send me any messages on the messages below. Um, I do love it when you guys have a little chat with me. If you've got any questions, do let me know. I obviously say that I am not uh, our gold work expert, despite the fact I'm doing some gold work for you today. But it's a little bit like a certain, I don't know if anyone's seen this particular episode of a certain American sitcom uh, featuring some scientists where they're all in the van and uh, the van breaks down and they say, oh, does anyone know how a combustion engine works? And they're all like, yeah, of course, because they've got like 16 PhDs between them. And they're like, okay, does anyone know how to fix a combustion engine? And they're like, oh, God, no. So it's a little bit like that for me. I know, I understand the theory. And um, so hopefully I still might be able to answer some questions you might have, despite the fact I'm not that practiced. I do find chipping really satisfying. I feel like it builds up really quickly which is great and you know the fact that it's super glittery is always lovely as well I mean who who doesn't need more glitter in their life really and so I'm working with a combination of the pewter bright check and our silver bright check at the moment just blending them together i think it'll probably take a little bit more time before the sort of gradient ombre starts to be a bit more visible the pewter and the silver are reasonably close in color so that does um you know definitely make it more subtle Now, if you've had a look at the launch that we put out at 12, um, you'll see that this class is a class only. It doesn't have a kit to go with it. So the class is 10 pounds and um, that gives you, I think it's like maybe 70 minutes, something like just over an hour of us talking you through how to approach the lettering. And it's a bit of a different setup to some of our previous classes. So we would recommend that this is for someone who's done a little bit of gold work before. So we will be discussing the gold work in the class as if you have done a bit before. So if you've perhaps taken our introduction to gold work cherry design or um, the gold work pear design, that would have been, you know, very thorough then you could definitely sort of um, take on this class and would be very confident that you would produce a really good outcome from that. If you're a little less practiced, you might like to have a look um, at some of a slightly more introductory class first, but again, that is your choice. And the reason we say that is because the way we're teaching it is we obviously couldn't demonstrate every letter for you. So we've broken the letters down into their constituting parts. And so we've basically identified six characteristics that all the letters share, and then show you how to um, approach each of those characteristics. So then when you download your design, you get the letter 
template for you to copy from. But uh, you also have a list underneath which tells you which characteristics um, apply to your letter. And so then you can just skip back and forth through the video, which has got subtitles throughout um, of which section we're in at any given time, as well as um, you can go below the video and there is a table of contents and you can just click on the links and it'll take you to the right minute in the video to see a particular section. This first style, as I said earlier, has the pearl pearl edge and then the chipping fill. And so there's, well there's more than 12 sections, but there's 12 sections because um, of six characteristics in pearl pearl and six characteristics talked about in chipping. And so hopefully that should cover anything you might come across when you have a go of this yourself, which we would love to see. Because we always love to see your works. So when people share them with us on Instagram, it really does bring us such a sense of satisfaction. And we're always blown away with how well you've done as well, which is the lovely thing. Um, so, yeah. I can see, sorry, I've missed a couple of questions here. Let me just scroll back up. So, uh, Thimble and Stitch, hello, thanks for joining us. Uh, what does using the Malore allow you to do versus not using one for chipping? Great question, thank you very much. So, using the Malore, the Malore is important because it's a laying tool, although there are several types of laying tool that you can use in embroidery. And if you haven't got a Malore, but you have another laying tool like an awl or a stiletto, you can substitute that in. And if it's that's already kind of what you're used to for say monogramming, for example, you might already have a stiletto, then um, it just allows you to work with something that your hands are already familiar with. And they work in a very similar way. But the Malore is shaped so that um, it's good for getting in the pointy bits and easing things down, which uh, the laying tool is all about, getting things to lay nicely. So that's what I'm doing with um, mine at the moment, is just sliding it in and using it to control the tension of the thread as it comes down to the surface of the fabric, making sure that everything is sitting nice and evenly. Now using a laying tool is important, particularly with gold work, because the metal will discolour uh, with excessive touching and the oils of your hands. So as much as is possible, what you want to try and do is to use the Malore in place of touching the wire. So as you can see, like I come up to the surface and then I don't touch the wire and as much as possible I get it onto the needle, I get it down in place and then I use the Malore to ease it into place and so you're just using that Malore as a metal piece that hasn't got the oils of your hands on it in place of using your fingers. The Malore is also sort of put in place um, that it has the rounded back edge, which is quite good for sort of smoothing things along and reshaping wires that you may have already laid. So um, yeah, you've got the, the pointy end for pokey things and you've got the round smooth end for sort of smoothing things out. Right, I need to cut myself some more chips. I do have a separate pair of scissors here, which I use just for the gold work. Um, when I'm cutting the wire and that's also because obviously we're cutting these metal wires and if we use our favorite pair of regular snips we're always going to be blunting the ends of those scissors and so then when we come to use them on thread they're not going to be cutting very well so it's um it's always really useful to have a pair of scissors that you're not so precious about to use on your metal wires and that 
just means that everything's going to keep working in the same way as you want it to and you can keep your favorite thread scissors for thread. Now this I hope when it's finished to make into I think a Christmas decoration is what I'd like to do with it. Um, I did pick my colours to be quite sort of traditionally Christmassy. Though we do have 12 shades of Bright Check on the website that you can pick from. Um, and there are, I think it's three shades of Pearl Pearl. So between the 26 letters, 12 shades of Bright Check and three Pearl Pearls, there are literally thousands of combinations that you could make um, to personalize your well work letter. And that's kind of the beauty of this, that it's a bit more of an intermediate class because you need to pick your own materials, although we tell you what types you need to get, but you know, you, you've got some artistic control on this one. It's not, you know, a sort of more paint by numbers situation. Um, so, you know, you start to take creative control over your pieces with this piece is what we hope to encourage you to start to you know, develop your own stitching style and putting your stamp on things. Right, that'll do me for a little while. Uh, so I've got a question from Citra Rentanulia. I hope that's right, I'm sorry if it's not. Um, what's the name of that wire? So the wire I'm working with at the moment is called Bright Check and you know it's Bright Check because it has this lovely glittery effect to it and when you look at the wire really close up you can see that it has a sort of um, almost triangular way that it's been twisted. So it's flat bullion that gets twisted around a core but the core isn't smooth, so it creates these little corners um, as the wire is created. And that just means that, you know, it reflects all these different facets of the light as it hits it, which gives it that glittery effect. Versus your smooth pearl, um, which is wound around a smooth core, so it is cylindrical in the middle and that's the same for Pearl Pearl but Pearl Pearl is slightly um, is rounded on one side and smooth on the inside so it gives it that um, roundy pearly effect that you get from using it as an edge. So I'm mostly working in the pewter here. I did myself a little sort of rough colour plan of where I wanted each of the colours to lie within the design. And I think I'm just going to start myself a new thread now. This one's starting to feel a bit short and it's getting a bit restrictive so that's no good. You may have also noticed that I've got this little board up the top here that I've got my cut pieces on. That is a velvet board, also known as a bullion board. And it is kind of, as the name suggests, a, a piece of board that is velvet both sides. And I cut my chipping onto there so that um, it doesn't sort of fling all over the place um, with the effort of cutting it. Just keeps them all in place. That velvet pile provides a bit of a grippy surface, which is really useful. And it just stops them all from rolling away. So I've waxed up 
a new thread. Because I'm working with three or four different um, shades of Bright Check today, I'm using a thread that matches my base cloth, which is navy, so that that all blends in nicely because the only places we should be seeing it are in between. And I'm obviously looking to try and make sure there is as little in between the bright check chips as is possible to build up the most luxurious effect that I can muster. So with that safely in place, I can get rid of this knot. And so as we go over the top of this curve here, I'm going to start to blend back in my second colour, which is the silver. Come down and around here. And the more you manage to kind of smoothly blend the colours into one another, really the better the piece will look. So we're looking to be as subtle for those color changes as possible, really. Now, I have some questions for you as well, because I'd like to know um, a bit about you guys. So I don't know where you're joining me from today, but if you'd like to share that, I'd love to hear from you. I'd also like to know, like, what would you like to see from us next? If you guys could give us a little bit of feedback, I'd love to hear from you. Um, you know, is there a particular area of embroidery you're desperate to learn that we simply haven't covered yet and you don't understand why? If so, tell me. Um, I would really like to know and then I can speak to the right people and see what we can do. Um, we obviously have a fair few ideas in the works and there are things coming in the pipeline, aren't there always? Um, but, you know, if there's something that you would really like to know about, you're probably not alone. So, you know, let us know and see if we can do that for you. I'd also love to know what you would like to see from us for 2021 because we are in the planning stages of what's going to happen next year and we're always looking forwards so yeah what would you like to see more of what do you particularly like um it would be lovely to know and then we can you know try and put our best efforts into what interests you the most you have kind of a a unique direct audience here. Um, so let me know what it is that you're after. Ooh. Lost one of my threads there. Let's back this up. There we go. So if you can see where the Malore really comes into its own there because I managed to just catch one half of my thread and so the other half then makes this huge horrible bunch and because of the wax that we've used on the thread to help strengthen it because of the sharp edges of the metal to give it a little bit more body it does mean that it's kind of got a bit of a grippier surface as well to the the texture of the thread itself now and so it doesn't pass quite as easily but it does need to be that bit stronger so you know 
you sort of take what you can from that because we've got to give the thread a little bit more um, body to stand up against all this metal that we're putting it up against. So CR Surfer 2000 from New Hampshire, USA. Lovely to have you join us. What time is it over there? Um, is there a newsletter that tells us when you're doing these classes? Yes. Um, well, we have a newsletter and you can sign up to our mailing list for that on our website. If you scroll down to the bottom, you can pop your email in there and um, then you'll be on our mailing list and we'll send you um, an email to confirm that. With our mailing list, you are um, approached for, well, you get to know everything when it comes out a little bit earlier than everybody else. And um, we sometimes have exclusive offers that we put on to our mailing list. Um, so yeah, it is worth signing up to. Um, we probably email, I'd say, well, it's maximum once a week. It's definitely not more than that. So hopefully not too irritating um, for filling up your mailbox. But we think when we, when we email, we think we've got good stuff to tell you. So yeah, hopefully if you're interested, then um, you shouldn't find them too spammy. Uh, but yeah, find that on our website and you can sign up there. And um, we talk about all of our new launches on there with things like uh, stitch alongs. They are more ad hoc um, and we sort of fit them in around the other things we have to do. Um, so we normally give you about 24 hours notice on stitch alongs. But um, as you'll probably find if you're not watching this live and you're watching this later, that um, you know they do go on to our Instagram live um, section and so you can pick up on those later. As always, I will be eventually turning this into a YouTube channel video too um, and you can if you're looking for more things from us you can find definitely find more in our archives on the YouTube channel and there's loads of good stuff on there um, we have all of our pro tips on there and we're always adding to that so little things that might um, enhance your embroidery that you might not already know about it is quite literally tips from us pros. Um, we also share sneak peeks of things that go on in the studio. Um, if you've ever been curious to know what goes on in an embroidery or textile studio, then we can share some of the stuff from there. All of our class launches and the tasters for those classes to give you a flavor of what you would get if you purchased the class, if it's a paid class, you'll find on there, um, yeah. Lots of good things, basically. Things that we hope you'll enjoy. So it's it's 12 noon in the US. See, I, I'm never very good at whether you're ahead or behind, but um, I'm glad that I've hopefully managed to pick a, you know, a, a nice enough time for you guys over there to join in as well. Because um, I'm, I'm never sure. And today's time for the stitch along was voted for by you guys. Um, so I don't know whether you guys actually joining me today are the people who voted. Would be interesting to know if you did vote. Um, but originally, uh, well, the two options were 10 o'clock this morning, obviously UK time, or four o'clock this afternoon. And initially, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning was winning. I was like, oh, okay, maybe I've been, you know, doing these at the wrong sort of time because they do have tended to be in the afternoon previously. Um, but I did wonder if popping them at a different time of the UK day might obviously make it more accessible for different parts of the world. And I know that we do have a ever growing um, international following. So thank you for joining us if you're joining from abroad and I appreciate it. this might not be the mo world's most convenient time for you, literally, but um, it's lovely to have you here all the same. But as time went on yesterday and more people voted, it definitely swung in favour of the 4pm. So I I did bow to public opinion and 
alas, here we are at now half past four, stitching away. Did slightly not quite think about the fact that the light is really going here. So um, I've got plenty of lights on and hopefully you'll still be able to see everything. But the, uh, the sort of look of the light might change as it obviously fades now very much into artificial light from the natural light I probably started with at, at bang on four o'clock. Thimble and Stitch says um, that you would like ribbon embroidery techniques um, as well as raised work flowers, stitched petals as opposed to fabric petals. Okay, yes, that is, I think that's probably something that we could look into. Um, probably not something I think we've thought about so far, so I'm glad I asked. Um, and because that's the beauty of it, you can, if you guys can lend us a little bit of your brains, then collectively, hopefully we can, um, you know, create some really interesting things together. Because obviously we want to create things that you guys want. Um, after all, that's, that's how the school came to exist, was um, that people were asking after classes and such like from us. So yeah, we are here to serve basically. And I say that in the context, some of you may not know that the London Embroidery School is the sister company of a bespoke embroidery company called Hawthorne and Heaney. So that's the we that I reference in that sentence there. Um, yeah, and that's kind of how the school came to be. And I think it must be, I don't know, maybe seven, eight years or so that um, we've been going now working with the school. Uh, as I say, Hawthorne and Heaney's been going a little bit longer than that. Yeah. Are you guys thinking about Christmas? I always feel like, particularly with um, bright check but gold work in general always makes me feel Christmassy and these letters I think are going to be great for Christmas whether you want to you know make them into little hanging decorations so that might look a little bit more like like this or you can pop them in a little frame then keep them up all year round it's also a nice option Okay, so CR Surfer, you're also interested in ribbon embroidery. Good. Um, that's good to know that it's popular generally. And we have H. Benasia. Uh, can you tell me what kind of thread you're using? So this is just um, a regular cotton thread, sew all thread um, that I've waxed. So it does have, I don't know, I doubt you can see this on the. Uh, on that camera or on the live stream quality at least but it has because of the waxing a slightly sort of um, whitish hue to the outside of it but I'm just using a navy thread to match the base fabric as that will make it as subtle as I can for my ever-changing and blending chipping fill. Thimble and Stitch. How's everything going with the new space down on Savile Row for H&H? &H? Um, it's, it's really good, thank you. Um, yes, those of you who don't know, the Hawthorne and Heaney part of the business moved to a Savile Row office, um, oh, I don't know, months, six weeks ago, something like that, um, which is very exciting and um, yeah it's all very shiny and it's a really lovely space so it's going really well thank you very much uh, my Bracol hi nice to have you here um, I would be interested in some beadwork classes too okay 
Good, so more beading, yes, I think, I feel like we definitely could expand on our beading because we just have the timbre class, really. So um, yeah, that's, uh, that's another good one to think about. Thank you for that. So uh, Judith Photographer, do you always use the threads doubled for all gold embroidery? No, I am at the moment, um, as you have very astutely noticed, because I am doing the chipping and so the thread is passing through the centre of the bullion and therefore it needs all the strength it can get for that. When we're doing things like um, pearl pearl, like the edging that I've already done here, that was done with a single thread and that is because it um, you're effectively couching the pearl pearl down and so it just sort of sits on the surface of the bullion. It's not going through the core, it's going over, if that makes sense. So therefore it doesn't need to be as thick and particularly with pearl pearl, you want it to drop down nice and subtly in between the um, the little loops um, of the pearl pearl itself to give it that nice rounded edge effect that you get with pearl pearl. And so that single thread allows things to drop down nice and cleanly between the loops of the pearl pearl. And I think, oh, we've somebody, we've got Gabby Clav joining us from Argentina. I think that might be a new one for me. Thank you. Hello, Argentina. Um, yeah. Very cool that so many international people join us. Not that I don't love my UK followers. It's, uh, it's really nice to have some people from home. Um, and you always seem to be quite happy to have a little chat with me, which I appreciate enormously. It's, uh, it's nice to have some people chat back to you um, as I, I sort of sit here and, and talk away for an hour or so. Well, it'll be a bit under an hour because uh, I think Instagram cuts you off at an hour. So you won't have to listen to me for that long. If you do um, enjoy these little random chats of me talking away, um, you can also find me on my own YouTube channel, which is called Taking Time with Tasha. Um, where I document some of my craft practices, um, amongst them embroidery, and I have a bit of a chat about some things. Sometimes I chat, sometimes I don't, sometimes it's just stitching or just craft, um, and that's a bit more personal side of things. So if you'd like to see some more from me, then you can find me on there, Taking Time with Tasha. With uh, Christmas coming, we do have our Christmas gifting service available and I can see that quite a lot of you have already chosen to take us up on that and prepare some gifts on your behalf to send directly to your loved ones. Um, so yeah, if you want to get involved with that, we'd be more than happy to help you as well. Um, it does allow us to yeah, present whatever physical thing you buy um, as a really beautiful gift, it gets all wrapped up uh, with a bow on top. You get an embroidered card and we will handwrite your choice of message in that card. So if you're getting a bit stuck for ideas or you're worried about not sort of um, seeing people for Christmas and sharing gifts in person, then perhaps we can, you know, take a little bit of that strain away from you and particularly for other crafters in your life, send them um, a gift of something embroidery related that we will get to them and they all get sent out on the 1st of December so they've got plenty of time to arrive and when they get there they are in a, uh, a just in a like a mailer bag that they can open um, and then the present is inside already and very obviously to go under the tree so 
yeah we can um, get all that sorted for you and take a little bit of the strain off of you and it does I mean it does feel a bit early to be talking about Christmas but it, you know it's just around the corner isn't it it's Halloween tomorrow and then I feel like after that we are in full Christmas mode the lights are all up in in London anyone who's been into central London they're all up they're obviously not on just yet but they are they just sort of appear overnight um, and every time you go down a different road there's the lights set up and it's like oh it's around the corner it's coming and I don't know about you but I personally quite like to spread my Christmas shopping over uh, a few paychecks you know just makes it a little bit more manageable so I have begun mine I'm, I'm certainly not done I'm not one of those people who's already done with their Christmas shopping I, that is I mean that's goals but um, I'm not there just yet. But I feel good to have started at least. All right, so um, H. Benasia is in, in Kent in the UK, a lovely part of the country, must say. You are very lucky. I hope um, you enjoy living there. Garden of England is, is known as, isn't it? And rightly so. I'm sure you must have um, seen a bit of an increase in, you know, in tourism and that sort of thing this year with so many people doing staycations and whatnot. Very, very lovely. Now, where am I? So I don't know whether you can tell, I'm starting to blend in some of the gold here. Just to keep that subtle colour change coming. That's why I spun my velvet board around. So that I am using I'm always just blending two colours, the two colours that are closest to me. So we've got the pewter up the top there. I think you can start to see the, uh, the ombre effect going on. Coming along, coming along. This first technique combination of the chipping and the pearl pearl um, is going to be the first in a series of these classes. So if I just bring our other examples over. So this is obviously our chipping and pearl pearl combination there. We've also got this one here which is cut work with a pearl pearl edge and we've got a mixture of different bullions used for uh, the cut work itself and then we've also got um, our couch threads for the centre with um, a colour run through the pearl pearl edge for this last style. So these ones will be coming in the future. So do look out for those. It's probably going to be um, a good few weeks. Um, I'd say possibly more like a month or so before we are ready to put out the next um, sort of family of techniques as a class in the same way as we've done today. So do jump on um, enjoying the, this first class and there will be more to come, more things to show you. I just think it's it's really fun and like you could, I mean really the world is your oyster with this, you could spell out whatever you'd like really. The, the little presentation frames I think look so cute on a wall hanging and you could 
yeah, write out whatever you like, really. So I, I look forward to seeing what you guys do with your letters, um, as it's certainly giving me lots of ideas of things that I'd like to do in, in my home. Just needed an extra small one there to go in the gap, cutting some more. So, thimble and stitch. You've got your presents sorted for your siblings, um, but you're making things for other family members. Well done you. I think this year in particular, I feel like handmade gifts have are gonna have a real resurgence. And yeah, maybe people will appreciate them a little bit more. I can't remember who it was uh, last time I did a stitch along, which was only a couple of weeks ago. Um, was saying that they often make uh, embroidered gifts for people, um, but they're not always appreciated, and so it puts them off, and that just made me really sad for them, um, because I, I think a, an embroidered gift or a, a handmade gift is a really beautiful thing. Um, and perhaps, perhaps this year people will be a little bit more receptive, um, you know, because the current situation and that, it's nice to have something that somebody even that you can't see, you know that they had a real, a literal hand in it, other than, you know, and that's not to say that, um, you know, purchased gifts aren't lovely also, because they really are, but uh, I, it just, it just adds a little extra element. So if you're that way inclined, I, I actively encourage you to make some lovely things for people you love because I think it's a really nice thing to do, but I am terribly biased. So make of that what you will. <laughs> um, so we've got, Patrick Dimp, maybe? Uh, sorry, late joining. Um, does the thread color match the background? Yes, so I'm using a navy thread on my navy background. I think you, the, I mean, it's like fully dark here now, so hopefully you guys can still see that in the, yeah. So I'm just uh, having a good look at the screen from a different angle, as obviously I'm mostly, I'm mostly focused on my embroidery. I'm, I'm fully submerged in the task at hand. Sorry if I've missed any questions. If you do have any burning questions that I've missed out because I was looking at my stitching and not at the screen. Um, so sorry about that, I'm not ignoring you. And if I haven't covered whatever your question was, please do feel free to direct message us. Um, it will likely be me picking those up. So I will try and answer your questions on there if I've missed them live at all. And once again, sorry. And uh, hello to you too, is it uh, Beta Chuka? Are you new joining us today? Anyone new joining us? Or are you all seasoned watchers, stitchers? What have you been working on recently? I'm, I'm curious to know because I'm terribly nosy. Um, <laughs> so yeah, anything you would like to share with me, I would be interested to know about. As I mentioned earlier, it's only actually been a couple of weeks uh, since I did our last stitch along, which I'm congratulating myself hugely about. Um, as I touched upon, we sort of try and fit them in around, um, you know, all the other things that are going on in, in the studio and the launches that we have coming up and all that sort of thing. And so, uh, yeah, for it to have only been a couple of weeks, because it was, I think, maybe three months prior to that. I know I was very bad. I was very neglectful of you lovely people. So 
sorry about that, I'm trying to be better, but I did have a lovely, lovely time last time that um, I was on Instagram Live with you guys and it really spurred me on to like make the time, I've got to make the time um, to come and chat to you guys. Um, and it's, there is something different about doing it live and talking to you and getting your, you know, immediate feedback on things. That's, I think, really useful for us, particularly at the moment when obviously we're all not seeing each other really, and we haven't got any in-person classes going on. So it um, really helps us to kind of take the temperature of, of our community and what you guys are liking and not so much liking. So um, it's really good to know. And I do thoroughly appreciate all of the precious info that you guys share with me in these Instagram lives, um, giving us the opportunity to hopefully do more of what you want. Um, let's have a little read here. Uh, thank you very much for everyone sending in <laughs> nice comments about the embroidery. I'm, I'm trying my best. As I say, it's not my speciality, but we're all here to learn together. Okay, so you're working on 12 day ornaments from MMM Crafts with added gold work. Oh, okay, so does that mean that you are adding your own spin on it? I love the idea of that. If you've got yourself a little little kit from somewhere and are making it your own, I think that's when it really, these things really come into their own, um, when you put your own slant on things. And I love to see people getting their creative juices flowing and um, yeah, personalizing it wonderful stuff so 12 days there you know you've um signed yourself up for what i can only assume is a reasonably large task if you've gone in and there's definitely 12 to make for the 12 days of christmas good on you uh, so cr surfer 2000 this is your first time watching you love stump work and presently are working on some ribbon embroidery good for you Excellent, thank you for finding us. Um, I hope uh, this will, won't be the last time and um, I'd be very interested to see how your embroidery is going. Um, and as you've got a few different techniques on the go, I'm, I'm gonna assume that you're reasonably well versed in embroidery. So well done you, nice to have you join us. Uh, Shannon Shock, I've been stitching some gold work great stuff along with me love what you're stitching oh that's very sweet thank you very much well the idea with this, the original stitch alongs was for people to stitch along at home um you know alongside me stitching so um it is nice to know when you guys are in fact doing that um independently and yeah that's oh that's really pleasing even more fun that you're actually doing gold work too. That you're probably seeing all the things that's wrong with mine. So um, uh, try not to judge me too harshly on there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very sad. I don't know whether you can see the damage that I did. Can you see this little like kink here? Yeah. Boo. Unfortunately, I'm always going to see that now when I look at it. Isn't that the nature of... Uh, it. and I've tried to reshape it but I can't it, it really does need changing maybe I'll try and change it out a bit later on we will see but alas that is all part of the development process and in some ways I probably shouldn't fix it so that it's you know recorded as part of my journey Okay, so for your 12 days of Christmas, there's more than 12. But it sounds lovely. 
well, good on you. I hope it's going well, and I hope you're enjoying it more than anything. Um, that is the great beauty of embroidery, I always think. CR Surfer 2000, what's your favorite technique? Uh, my favorite technique, um, mm -mm. this is like picking your children. I say as, as a childless woman, um, <laughs> but um, I believe what it's like to, to pick your favorite child. Um, I mean, I, I do love timbre. It's something that I come back to every, every now and then um, after being away from it for a little while. And it's, you know, one of those things that keeps on drawing me back in. So I would have to say timbre's got to be up there. Um, probably monogramming I do more regularly um, as as needed really and I would think that with monogramming skills they're so transferable that yeah they're really really useful and so they're really valuable in that context. I do however love the look of gold work and it's probably because it's not something that I've studied that extensively personally as I mentioned it's um, one of my colleagues that actually demonstrates the class and so um, sort of watching her always has me in absolute awe she is incredible like I know again I am hugely biased but um, <laughs> of course I am but yeah she is incredible so watching her doing things like gold work always just makes me you know it turns me into that sort of that little girl again being like oh I wish I could do that and spurs me on to make me want to practice more and learn myself so yeah not a very succinct answer for you but um, when it comes to embroidery I am you know a, a bit of a hussy I love them all so yeah there we go uh, it's still still blending my gold here. CR Surfer 2000, what about you? What's your favorite technique? Can you pick a favorite? Can you provide a, a more succinct answer than I did? Because I definitely failed at that bit. Now, I am rapidly heading oh, towards them probably gonna cut me off in any second basically um, as I have been waffling away for an hour already um, so I'm going to have to leave you here um, thank you so much for joining me today um, it's been a real treat and thanks for your lovely comments and everything um, do share any pictures that you'd like to with us of the things that you've made uh, particularly with London Embroidery School products and that sort of thing. So you can catch us on Instagram at London M School, um, on our YouTube channel, London Embroidery School. Um, Facebook is also called London Embroidery School. And yeah, sign up to the mailing list if you'd like to hear from us yet another way. Find it on our website, www.londonembroideryschool.com. That's all from me and Natasha at London Embroidery School. I'll let you know about the next one. Once all the excitement is over, we continue to do the same chipping to fill in the rest of the design and get everything looking nice and cohesive and finished, hopefully by the end. If you've enjoyed this video, please do think about giving it a like. It lets us know what you enjoy and would like to see more of. And if you'd like to see more of us, then please do consider subscribing to the London Embroidery School channel to know when we release a new video.